this. In this particular graph, you're looking at humans here. Humans uh, is an example of type one. Another good example is, is elephants. There's a lot of mammals follow this, this, type of, this type of survivorship curve. And the idea is that, especially with humans and, and elephants, you, what you do is you produce only uh, a few offspring at a time, and then you put a lot of effort, a lot of effort, energy, a lot of effort and energy into keeping them alive. So for instance, in a human, you're probably, in the case of a human, you're looking at, at making maybe one or two at a time on average, and then you keep them, you take care of, it takes nine months, so gestation, it's called gestation, the time that you spend, uh, the, the baby spends developing in the womb, uh, is nine months for a human. Uh, and then to grow to adulthood where they have in, in modern day, to grow to adulthood so you're ready to take care of babies, you're probably looking at, at a minimum of 18, really, to take care of a child on your own. In today's society, remember, in the old days, you'd be 13, you'd be married, you'd have, you'd start having children, and you'd get, be old by the time you're 30. And a lot of times the average lifespan was 30 or 40 years old. So you literally would be old at 30 or 40. So you have, uh, so it, it kind of depends on the time. So anywhere from, from uh, you know, this, this reproductive age, anywhere from in the old days, 13 to, and today is more likely we're ready. We consider you being ready for taking care of babies. I would say, I would argue something around the tw in your early 20s probably. So in the 20s, you know, I don't know. So, so yeah, it's kind of early 20s would be maybe pushing it. But in any case, that's for humans. For an elephant, if you look at an elephant, an elephant has has uh, a just uh, has again one really probably just one at a time. Their uh, gestation is called gestation time. Is actually not nine months like in humans, but two years. So a mother elephant carries a baby around for two years in their in their womb, and then uh, they said several years getting to the point where they can have babies. So that being said, the whole point here is that in this type of survivorship curve, most of the young survive. And it's only after we get older, it's only after we get older the older ones die more often. Right? That's humans and that's elephants. Rodents are different. Mice, rats, etc. They have uh, all, these, all these numbers here, how many months there it takes to develop, how many they have at a time and when they start having babies, all is much shorter. So they, they have more babies at a time. They have a smaller gestation, a shorter gestation time, and they get mature really quickly. But they die early and then throughout their whole lives at a pretty constant rate. Death is constant. They put some. Uh, they put some energy into milking and into uh, taking care of their young, but not uh, not as much as, as mammals and elephant and other. I mean, not as much as elephants or humans. So type two is a rodents would be just a constant death, birth, death, 
throughout the lifespan of the of the creature from from birth to to, to old age the rate of death is consistent why are you out of your chairs you can go why is anyone else at the door oh the talking back is so in any case that's consistent then when we're talking about type 3 with fish with fish they're extremely the opposite direction with ex in, in fish they make 10,000 eggs 10,000 uh, baby fish and a lot of them die most of them die quickly they get eaten very quickly so the newborns very few survive and even fewer get to the point where they're in reproductive age very few get to the point where they're reproductive age so from here to their to their death they're pretty consistently dying being hunted being taken out by whatever at a consistent rate but you'll see here in the early parts of their lives fish mostly die early and that's okay for fish they survive well that way because they have 10,000 young 10,000 young fish cannot survive they will die that is expected but as they get older they last long they they get taken out at a much slower rate than when they're young and that's that's the three kinds of survivor curves that you might be exposed to on this exam. The other thing I want to talk about, and I'm doing this early, is this idea of caring capacity. Caring capacity is the ability of land, water, the ability of, of an environment to hold a specific number of a, uh, a, a specific population over time. And what happens over time is you start off with a small population since there's it's small the population small there's plenty of food compared to the population plenty of land plenty of water not as many predators and so what happens is that you get population growth your birth nice rudeness is abound today birth 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 and immigration are high emigration and death is low so you get this increase real fast increase we call that exponential growth that means that it's growing very quickly you'll see you see the same kind of exponential growth here early on in any population's life you have this exponential growth but of course as the population gets more and more it comes a point where the food starts getting scarce water starts being scarce land there's not that much land left or space left because you have too many individuals in the population of course with that many populations so dense is usually such a high density of, of individuals you start to get disease spread and so that means it's going to level off and it's going to there's at to some maximum and it's going to stay pretty stable where the li life and death is just going is going to consistently happen and the population is not going to get that much bigger. We call that the carrying capacity. The maximum, the maximum, the maximum population any space can hold over time. Now, this is an idealized curve. Notice how smooth these lines are. And this is pretty flat. And if you, you can extend the line pretty easily from this number to there and the number here this population number is the carrying capacity but you see in the real world what happens is that you start off you start off low just like we just did it goes up it increases because there's plenty of resources and it kind of starts to level off maybe there's some event some predators or maybe some few diseases and then you just keep going beyond what is able. People don't just, a, a deer doesn't say, gee, there's, we're running out of food, let's have less babies. Deers don't do that, right? Fish don't do that. Rats don't do that. They keep having as many babies as, as they can. Is that clear? 
All organisms have as many babies as they can. Not humans. Humans have a brain. We can think our way out of a problem. But a rat, a dolphin, a chipmunk, you can't go until he comes back. So I'm not talking about the action. I, I, you can't do anything until they come back. So as you're moving along and you're going to have as many babies as you can, at some point you're going to have too many babies. So what happens when you get too many? They overpopulate. They're overpopulated. So what happens? Starvation, disease, war. So at that point, death starts to occur. More death than birth, so the population starts to decrease. Now the population gets low enough, some of you are on your phones texting. I'm going to keep this recording, and if I'm able to, talk, to share it with your parents, I'd like them to see the, the level of distraction some of you have in class. Some are, they have their head down, not looking at the board. Some of, are, are in and out of the classroom. Some are on their phones. It's interesting. I'm posting this just like it is. It's going to be a short one, and I'll send it to your parents. So the population is decreasing. There comes a point where it's low enough where there's a lot more land, food, and water than there are individuals in the population. So there have, the birth is, is higher than the death, and so the population starts to grow again. And again, it keeps going till it reaches beyond the max, and then it decreases again. So the, my point in drawing this, this graph is, the, is to make sure you understand that the carrying capacity is this. The place in between the maximum, which is a, be, and the minimum, there's this place that is the maximum this space can hold and maintain. A, anything, any population goes above that line will start to decrease. But there's a lag. Do you know what the word lag means? There's a discrepancy in when it starts and when it gets recorded because death starts, but death doesn't, the population doesn't end. You don't just have 20% of the population die like this, right? The individuals start to starve and starving takes time and then they don't have babies and so then the population starts to decrease over time and so you have that, it keeps going up because even though there's not enough food, you're still having babies. They'll die, but they're still being born. Does that make sense? Now they're all dying, they're gonna keep dying, and yeah, they're gonna die, there's gonna be plenty of food, but it's gonna take time for that, those births to happen, right? You're not gonna automatically have a bunch of babies born, it's gonna take time to develop those babies, and so the population's gonna take time to rebound. So this, this, the whole point here is that this carrying capacity can be found in the line between the bumps, where, where the line, where the graph is oscillating. We call it oscillating, going up and down, up and down, too high, comes back down, too low, just like glucose uh, homeostasis, just like any homeostasis, it's, it's a dynamic change that keeps it all around the normal. The dynamic change that keeps it around the norm. Okay, that's all I need to say today. I'll be posting this with all the disruptions and everything and sending it to your parents. Have a good one.